Welcome to my channel University of Universe. Introduction Let's start. Imagine you're in the market for a new home, a place for you and your loved ones. But instead of a house, you're searching for a planet, and it's not just for your family's future, it's for the survival of all humanity. This was the mission of 12 courageous astronauts in Christopher Nolan's 2014 film Interstellar. With Earth's resources dwindling and agricultural collapse on the horizon, humanity's best hope is to find a new home in the cosmos. The Lazarus mission sent 12 astronauts to 12 different planets, each a potential candidate for human colonization. A decade later, the Endurance mission set out to examine the three most promising planets. Gargantua to begin, let's recap what we know about Gargantua, the supermassive black hole central to interstellar. Located about 10 billion light years from Earth, it's estimated to be 100 million times the mass of our sun Gargantua, like many black holes, spins, generating significant angular momentum. This rotation boosts the spin of the surrounding accretion disk, a massive ring of gas and dust that provides light and warmth to planets like Miller and Man orbiting nearby. Miller's planet is an ocean world with constant, shallow waters punctuated by towering 1,200-meter tidal waves. This planet orbits dangerously close to Gargantua, right at the edge of its event horizon. But is such a location habitable, or even realistic? Some researchers suggest it might be possible. Theoretical planets called planets could form within a black hole's accretion disk, much like planets forming in a star's protoplanetary disk. Here, ice-covered dust particles could merge, eventually creating a gravitational pull strong enough to build a planet. If such planets exist, they would orbit within extreme radiation fields, primarily from the black holes accreting gas. Dr. Kip Thorne, the Nobel laureate and scientific consultant for the film, however, proposed that Gargantua's disk would have a temperature similar to our sun's surface, emitting a lot of visible light but sparing its planets from high-energy X-rays and gamma rays. He envisioned a very thin disk at Gargantua's equator, typical for black holes that haven't devoured a star recently. Thus, the movie's portrayal, while improbable, aligns with some possibilities in physics. Maintaining Miller's orbit around Gargantua would require precise motion. It needs to move fast enough to avoid falling in, yet slow enough to stay in orbit. Thorne suggests a sweet spot of stability where the centrifugal and gravitational forces balance perfectly. But the formation of such a planet is the true challenge. Thorne believes Miller's planet could only exist if it had formed within the accretion disk itself, a discrepancy in the film, where it's depicted outside this disk. This placement choice likely served the movie's visual aesthetics, even if it stretched scientific accuracy. A notable consequence of being so close to a black hole is time dilation. On Miller's planet, one hour equates to seven years back on Earth. The closer an object is to a massive body, the stronger the time dilation effect. For such extreme time dilation on Miller, Gargantua would have to rotate just one part per trillion slower than the maximum possible speed for a black hole. It's unlikely, but not entirely impossible. Now, let's discuss Miller's planet's colossal waves. In the film, intense tidal forces from Gargantua produce massive waves, much like tides on Earth, but far more dramatic. Dr. Thorne believes this might be possible only if the planet wobbled relative to Gargantua, requiring a third large body to keep its orbit elliptical. Another idea is that tidal forces deform the planet's crust, triggering enormous tsunamis, though such forces usually need another nearby body to induce this wobble. In real life, Jupiter's moon Europa is our best comparison. It has an elliptical orbit due to gravitational tugs from other Galilean moons, resulting in tides and surface cracks from subsurface oceans, which deform Europa's crust. Ultimately, Miller's planet is an inhospitable place, as the Endurance crew learns all too well. The Planet of Man's Next up in Interstellar is Man's Planet, a frigid and treacherous world orbiting Gargantua at a distance farther than Miller's planet. There's no significant time dilation on man's planet, but its unique features present a fascinating, albeit deceptive, environment. 
Dr. Mann had reported that this planet had a rocky surface, breathable air, and organic material, suggesting a potential for human habitation. However, we quickly discover that Mann falsified this data to increase his chances of rescue, hiding the fact that his world was an icy, inhospitable wasteland. Man's planet is essentially a frozen landscape filled with vast ice mountains, caverns, and sponge-like structures that conceal massive voids. One of its most surreal features is the presence of frozen clouds in the upper atmosphere, which would require these clouds to be less dense than the surrounding air. This seems implausible, given that typical frozen clouds would likely be composed of dry ice, frozen CO2, with a density around 1.55 G-CM superscript 3. An atmosphere made primarily of ammonia, for instance, would have a much lower density, about 0.00077 G-CM superscript 3 at Earth-like pressures. This density mismatch would make floating clouds of CO2 improbable unless the planet's atmospheric pressure and composition are vastly different. The film doesn't explain this, so it's safe to assume Nolan took artistic liberties to create a visually striking, otherworldly landscape that contrasted with the other planets. The frozen clouds on man's planet are thought to go through a cycle of sublimation, repeatedly freezing and evaporating depending on the planet's orbit. Such an effect would be plausible if man's planet had an eccentric orbit around Gargantua, causing it to periodically warm and cool. However, over time, most eccentric orbits tend to become circular unless influenced by a third body. This scenario is theoretically possible, but it's less likely in reality without some kind of ongoing gravitational interaction. Unlike Miller's planet, which had some analogies in known celestial bodies, man's planet is more difficult to compare to planets or moons in our universe. The ammonia-rich atmosphere it's implied to have is uncommon among known exoplanets. But we do know of many icy exoplanets, such as OGLE 2005 BLG 390 LB, a super-Earth located about 21,500 light-years away and reaching temperatures as low as minus 220 degrees Celsius. Like man's world, it would not be a welcoming environment for human life. Now, let's move on to Edmund's planet, the final destination in humanity's search for a new home. The Planet of Edmunds after leaving man's planet, the Endurance faces a critical problem. There is not enough fuel to make it directly to Edmund's planet. Located about a light year away and orbiting the star Pantagruel, the journey is only possible thanks to a complex maneuver. By slingshotting around Gargantua, Cooper and Brand gain enough momentum, but at the cost of 51 years due to intense time dilation. To further lighten the load and allow Dr. Brand to continue alone, Cooper detaches from the ship, ultimately sacrificing himself to reach their final destination. In The Science of Interstellar, Kip Thorne describes the endurance reaching speeds of one-third the speed of light while near Miller's planet. At this velocity, it would take only about three years to reach Edmonds. However, a key question arises, how could Brand decelerate into orbit around Edmonds? Though not explained in the film, one theoretical approach would be to use a slingshot maneuver around another massive object. Edmund's planet is depicted as a rocky, Earth-like world with a breathable atmosphere, which implies the presence of surface water and some kind of biosphere producing oxygen gas, likely through compatible soil bacteria. By the film's conclusion, a human colony is already thriving, suggesting the planet has arable land and ecological conditions favorable for Earth-based life. Edmund's planet shares several characteristics with Earth, similar gravity, atmosphere, and possibly liquid water. Its day-night cycle also suggests it's not tidally locked. Fans of Interstellar have compared Edmund's planet to a primeval Mars when it had oceans and an active atmosphere. Another close comparison is Kepler-452b, an exoplanet discovered in 2015. Located about 1,400 light-years away in the constellation Cygnus, Kepler-452b orbits a sun-like star in its habitable zone, where conditions may allow for liquid water. With a diameter 1.6 times that of Earth and a 385-day orbit, it's one of the most Earth-like exoplanets we know. While we haven't confirmed whether Kepler-452b has fertile soil, water, or breathable air, its potential for habitability mirrors Edmunds. 
Kepler 452b is theorized to have a rocky surface and thick atmosphere, possibly capable of sustaining liquid water and regulating temperatures. If true, both planets might support diverse ecosystems. By the film's end, Edmonds is humanity's new home, with potential for thriving human colonies. Similarly, Kepler 452b, if reachable, could one day be a target for human exploration and perhaps colonization, provided, of course, we solve the small problems of interstellar travel, hypersleep pods, and wormholes. Conclusion and with that, our exploration of the exoplanets and interstellar comes to an end. While each planet presents its own unique set of challenges and questions, it's clear that Edmund's planet stands out as the most likely candidate for human colonization. The film leaves a lot of its potential unexplored, but in terms of habitability, it's the best shot we have, at least in the context of the movie's narrative. Overall, Interstellar strikes a good balance between scientific accuracy and creative storytelling. Yes, there are moments where the science takes a backseat to drama or visual impact, but that's the nature of science fiction. It's about sparking imagination and wonder. While the real-world technology and knowledge needed to colonize other planets remain far off, the film still encourages us to dream big and keep pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the universe. And in that sense, Interstellar is more than just a movie, it's an inspiration for future exploration, a reminder of our limitless potential. If you enjoyed today's deep dive into planets or pure sci-fi latest innovations and want to stay updated on everything and more, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode, and join us as we explore the future of sustainable energy and cutting-edge tech. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.